So this here is a lovely little gearbox I've created in just about a day. It's a 1 to 32. So every time this one here spins once, this back one here is going to spin 32 times. And I have no idea how fast I can get this to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this going with my hand. And then from there, we're going to attach a crank, put a drill to it, and make this go as fast as possible. And just a quick note to say that this video is sponsored by PCBWay. So that there is about as fast as I can get it to turn by hand. If we take a look at the freeze frame, the fastest I was able to get it to go is 1,953 RPM, which if I divide that by 60, gives me about 32.55, which means this back gear here was spinning 32.5 times per second, which is insane to think that I'm just going like this and that back gear is going that fast. So how exactly did I design this? We'll dive straight into that now and then we're going to really crank this up with a crank and then a drill. So when it came to designing this, it was actually really quick and easy. Getting it to actually work was a different thing. So designing wise, I did this all in Blender. I used Precision Gears, which is one of my add-ons. You can get it for eight bucks or you can even get it for free. I just did an update on it and the update let me design this literally in 10 minutes because it lets you do automatic rigging of all types of gears. It's really quite cool. So once I put this all together in Blender, I decided that I wanted to laser cut this. So I used Outline to SVG, another free add-on of mine. And then from there, I put it onto the Atomstack A30 Pro. Now Atomstack did send me this laser for free to give it a go and show you guys. And usually I am not an advocate of this style of laser, just the whole idea that it's open I'm not a fan of that. So I told them, no matter what, you've got to give me an enclosure for it. So they sent me their enclosure. And with that enclosure, I have to say it did pretty well. This here is six millimeter popular ply and it cut it like butter really accurately. But here comes the design thing that I said, it took a little bit of work to get this to actually work. First time around, I did the gears like this and there's just too much friction between the metal rod and the gear. So things weren't free spinning. So I decided I'm gonna put some bearings. So I pretty much just created a pressure fit. And then with that pressure fit, that is when I knew that this was going to really go. Now, if you're interested in finding out a whole bunch more about designing and Blender for makers and all the rest, I have a free course down on the bottom as well as a crash course and a whole bunch of other stuff. So go check it out. And now let's go check out how fast I can really get this to go. Now that you know how we've gone about designing this and I'm confident it can go faster thanks to those bearings, let's put this crank to it. Now, yes, it's not exactly my best work. It's a little bit jank, but let's just go and attach it and get this going. So when it came to the crank, it wasn't as impressive as I thought it would be. We got to a maximum speed of about 2,025, which means that this back gear was only spinning 33 times a second, which isn't as impressive because I was able to move that with my hand to get to 32 anyway. So the main reason why was because the turning circle of this was so big and I'm just not able to turn that fast enough to get that to turn faster than once per second. So let's attach the drill to it. But very quickly while I attach the drill, let's pay the bills with this video sponsor. PCB Way, you've probably heard about them, but they're not just about PCBs. They're about making maker projects come to life with their top-notch quality cost-effective services. Their capabilities stretch from CNC machining to sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and a plethora of 3D printing technologies. Find out how PCB Way can elevate your maker projects by clicking the link down in the description. And a big thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring a part of today's video. Right now, just before we go full on with the drill, I really do feel like this is gonna be the last attempt for this. So I'm gonna give this the best shot possible. I'm going to super glue the absolute heck out of this connection here. And my secret ingredient here is some graphite powder. I'm just going to pretty much cover every connection here 
with some graphite powder to really lubricate this system because it's wood i think this is going to be the perfect choice to really get the maximum speed out of this so let's do that and get this going Yes, I know I should have added more screws. This only took me a day to make and I didn't have any other type of screws, okay? Now that there was quite a spectacular ending, but by no means is this the end of the journey. But first, a massive thank you to my patrons and my thanks members. Truly, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to carry on doing Maker Tales and exploring these crazy projects and making all these add-ons. Truly, it means the world to me. So if you're enjoying what I'm making here and think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. It didn't go quite as fast as I expected it to. We got to a maximum of, from what I can tell, 4,398 RPM, which is pretty impressive for something I just designed in a couple of minutes. And that means that this last gear was going 73 spins per second. That is insane. Now my plan is I wanna probably think about getting past 10,000 RPM. If you think that's a cool idea, let me know down in the description how I can best go about doing this. I wanna stay laser cutting for now, and then I'm gonna move into 3D printing where I have a very ambitious goal to come. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you wanna get access to these files and along with exactly how to make this and all the rest, it's linked down in the description. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.